Okay. Hey, everyone. So this is my senior capstone proposal. Uh, my project name is Welcome to My World. So a little bit about me. My name is Jenna Hassan. Um, I am a transfer student from Kapi'olani Community College's New Media Arts Program. Uh, I went to high school at Pacific Buddhist Academy, and my program of study is creative media with a concentration in general creative media. So just an overview of what I'll be going through. So plans for senior capstone project, uh, my thesis statement, uh, my objective and rationale of the research conducted. And then I'll address the significance of my proposed project with my research. So this is my thesis statement. Storytelling is a valuable tool that can change an audience's perspectives of dissimilar people, like the neurodiverse community, due to its structure, emotional appeal, and ability to weave information and viewpoints into a digestible narrative. And um, for those who don't know uh, neurodiverse or neurodiversity, it refers to individuals with the neurodevelopmental disorder. Okay, and a couple of things for my objective and rationale. Um, I want to prove how and why stories influence people's views and the significance of its structure, show how stories have impacted misunderstood communities like the disability community, argue the value of stories and how diverse viewpoints help build a more inclusive world, uh, discuss the neurodivergent community, terminology, medical discourse, providing context for how and why stories may help much like they would for other stigmatized communities. Um, two other things, make connections between storytelling, human psychology and neurology um, in order to emphasize the power of this form of communication. And lastly, uh, or actually no, there's two more, is for how storytelling bridges a gap between individual and research and service industries and also like how it creates to creative connects to creative media okay so my senior capstone plans so what am i planning to deliver it's a series of short stories with visuals posted on instagram and it will feature characters with common disabilities so uh the ones i'll be going over is autism adhd Tourette's, dyslexia, dyspraxia, and dyscalculia. And each of these stories will be accompanied by a poll on Instagram to get a sense of what the audience has learned and understood. Um, and then how does this, uh, how is this appropriate to the research I've conducted? So um, first of all, my research mentions how stories of neurodivergent people um, like the ones I just mentioned, have shared their stories and in doing so helped their peers, their teachers, organizations, and researchers get a better understanding of their struggles. And it's allowed these people in their lives to help them. Um, you know, it's all about sharing perspectives, making the world a more inclusive place. So this project uses storytelling to educate, advocate, and invoke empathy. So just like my, my research argues that it could do. And for the significance. Okay, so I am trying to make complex information more accessible and shine a light on different disabilities. Um, and again, that's namely the common disorders that I mentioned. Um, and these would be like mentioning symptoms from the DSM-5 TR, which is the newest diagnostic manual. Um, and then the future implications for that uh, would continue to inspire, inform, and broaden perspectives, uh, contributes to disability activism and awareness in general, and becomes hopefully one of many projects that promote the use of creative media for 
education and inclusivity. And um, in my research, this would be referred to as serious storytelling because uh, as some researchers put it, you know, it's made, it's not made with the sole intent of entertaining. It's made uh, with the intent of educating and then entertainment is also a part of it. Um, and next one, significance. Another significant thing that this project does is it spreads awareness about unique perspectives in a fun way that people can remember. Um, and the future implications for that. So one, it opens up conversations even in the future because it's always gonna be on Instagram. People could still see it. Um, it normalizes disabilities in general because you know the more you talk about it, the more normal it becomes. And it could be revisited and or retooled and when I say revisited, I mean in the sense that it could be posted on other social media sites uh, or it could be used in some other context. Um, and then lastly, you know, the emotional response helps people remember, which is another thing that I learned in my research. And here's some data that I've gathered from my, uh, from my research. So you'll be surprised to learn that 90% of disabilities are actually invisible, uh, which is also why, you know, a lot of people are unaware of other people's struggles. And also in my research, I've learned about how people anticipate stereotypes, so they try to hide their differences, um, which can make it even harder to tell. So um, this, these are statistics worldwide. 5% of the population has ADHD, 1% to 2% of the population is autistic, 10% of the population is dyslexic, 5% is dyspraxic, 1% to 2% have Tourette's syndrome. And then in regards to uh, storytelling, um, I identified that there were like four main components of storytelling from the article article serious storytelling. Um, one is perspective, which is the point of view attached with emotions and a frame of mind. Uh, next, we have narrative, which is basically the meat of the story that's held together by like descriptions, actions, events, you know, characters. Um, then there's interactivity, which is how people engage and respond with the narrative. And then lastly, there's medium, which is the way in which the story is delivered. Like, is it a comic or, I mean, even a podcast or, you know, something posted on Instagram, that kind of thing. And then I also identified that there were several things that contribute to the success of a story. And it's really on a case by case basis for each story, like, uh, how well it'll achieve these things. So I said like, you know, it could be zero to a hundred for like each of these things, but ideally you want to have each of these factors um, resonate with more than half of your audience. So that would be, you know, that the viewers relate to the characters in the story or at least one character. Um, in one of my studies, they found that a lot of times people, uh, relate to the main character and they take on their point of view or even more than one character. Um, another thing that really contributes to success is how, how, if and how the character influences the viewer's behavior. And then uh, also it's important, do the viewer, does the viewer relate to the settings, morals and or culture? Like, do they understand? Do they have any sort of connection to what's going on in the story? And then um, from a book by Lara or Maria Pia Lara, um, she talked about um, the judgment process that uh, occurs between the reader and the narrative. 
And uh, one of the things that's really important is if the story activates the viewer's critical thinking, because that's where things become transformative, where the reader starts to think about their own views and their own life and like kind of change their own thoughts and based on what they read. So that's a really important thing. Okay, and target audience. So my target audience would be the general public who's not well informed about these invisible disabilities. So general public, neurotypical. Um, but you know, it's worth noting that this also applies to people who are undiagnosed. Um, also, when I say neurotypical, uh, I mean those who don't have a neurodevelopmental disorder because they went through what is considered normal development. Um, so the, the non-disabled community. And my proposed solution. So first of all, what is the intellectual significance to the members of my community or discipline? And you know, to get an idea of the intellectual significance, uh, it's worth noting that there are one or more things that I could apply to people that I know and the people around me. So one, they may not have a disability. Two, they don't know anyone with a disability, or maybe they do know somebody like me, but they don't truly understand, nor are they aware of disabilities of people they don't know. Um, and then lastly, you know, it's possible that they may have encountered information about disabilities, but they have very little information or worse, the information that they do have is inaccurate. So, you know, also to add to that, many disabilities, like I said, are invisible and social, social stig stigmas exist, which is a real problem. So then how does this solve the problem? So with those issues in mind, I'm attempting to make information about disabilities more accessible and visible to the public around me. Um, so how I plan to do this? Um, well, one, using Instagram. Instagram is a very public uh, social media platform. You know, hundreds of thousands of people go on Instagram. Um, and you know, not only is it visible to it's it's visible to everybody, not just someone who's specifically researching the topic. Um, also, what's great is it's some it's a way for people to interact with the content. You know, they can comment on it, they can answer the polls. Like you actually get a sense of like what they're feeling. Um, the other thing that helps to address this problem is the technique that I'm employing, I'm using storytelling, or you could say in a broader sense, it is creative media because I'm also using images. And I think the emotions and experiences conveyed within the story attempt to not only educate, but also keep viewers engaged and interested, which is not something an academic article is required to do. Um, and then finally, I think it's worth noting that, you know, who better to challenge stigmas than by those who suffer the most from them? You know, as a member of the disability community and someone who knows other people in the community as well, uh, I think our experiences, whether cl cleverly woven into fiction or told through nonfiction means, um, provide an authentic insight of what it's like. Um, so, you know, Symptoms that you read in like a diagnostic manual, they become more than words. Uh, you know, within a narrative, uh, they're within situations and there's context and an authentic character, there's an authentic character who has their own unique way of being and seeing. It really humanizes things. Okay, so as for my uh, process, so, First, I'm gonna try and plan out my characters. So 
for each disability, I will have one or more characters. So I'll be thinking about their design um, and that kind of thing. I will also be like planning out the story, you know, going through ideas, reaching out to people that I know. And um, along with planning those things, I'll also be like making my poll questions, which will kind of reflect the story. Like I'll be asking questions related to it. Um, and then next is production. You know, I'm, I'm like finalizing the characters, you know, getting, getting their designs done, finishing the stories. Um, and then in post-production, which I anticipate would be mid-semester, I will be posting on social media. Um, and I will also be collecting and reviewing the poll data. And it's possible that based on that, I may add more or even like make another poll because the audience is involved, so it could change. Okay, so here are some examples. Um, my idea for my deliverables, basically, you know, I have a post where you have like the image of the character like this, um, images of scenes from the story. And then like here, the in the description section, there would be like a short story. And then for each character story, I would have a poll where I ask people questions about the story and the character. So for instance, say I'm talking about autism, I may post two stories with a character who has autism because I really wanna emphasize the fact that no two people with autism are exactly the same. So um, it would be interesting to see, like, does the audience know that both of these people have autism? Uh, another example, say ADHD, uh, there are three different types of ADHD actually. So an intriguing thing is you could have one story with three perspectives. Um, and even more interesting, say they're triplets and you know one's primarily inattentive, the other one's hyperactive, the other one has symptoms of both. And it'd be interesting to ask the audience, you know, can you tell who has ADHD? Because it's kind of a trick question. All three of them do. So um, what's also really helpful is that Instagram recently like expanded on their poll options. So I could have more than two options. It doesn't have to be yes or no. It could be like this. And one more example of a deliverable, uh, which is also like this shows how cool it is what you can do by having visuals too. Um, or, or even like applying effects to the text. So I could have say a story of a character with dyslexia and they're trying to read a story. So, you know, just like the other stories you're hearing from that person's perspective, um, you kind of get a sense of their struggles. But I also want to emphasize the fact that, you know, I'm showing their unique experience without explicitly saying what their condition is. I want to see if the audience members can tell or maybe they'll learn something new. And you know, what I'm trying to do, what they always advise uh, is to show, not tell. So yeah, thank you for listening.